Hi guys, welcome to section 12.3, the dot product. The dot product is also known as the inner product or the scalar product. Um, we sometimes call it the scalar product because interestingly, when we take the dot product of two vectors, the result is a scalar. So let's see how do we calculate the dot product. Given two vectors in two dimensions, vector A, which has components A1 and A2, and vector B, which has components B1 and B2, um, the dot product would be, well, it's the constant obtained by multiplying the first components in each vector together. So it's going to be A1 times B1. And we add to that the product of the second components in each vector, A2, B2. And when you do this, notice that the result is a scalar. Or a constant. So in three dimensions, it's the same process. We just add on the product of the third components. So A, the vector A um, times the vector B, or the dot product of A times the, the dot product, I'm sorry, the dot product of vector A um, with vector B is going to be A1, B1, plus the product of the second components, A2, B2, plus the third, A3, B3. Okay. So let's find the dot product of these two vectors. Vector V is negative 2, 4, 1, and vector W is 2, 0, 1. So we find the dot product V times W by doing negative 2, the first component of V, times the first component of W, plus the second component of V times the second component of W, plus the third component of V times the third component of W. We get negative 4 plus 11, and the result is the scalar 7. Properties of the dot product. The dot product of a vector with itself is just the magnitude of the vector squared. All right, so let's just say, like if we were in three dimensions, we would have v1, v2, v3. So v times v would just be v1 times v1 plus v2, v2 plus v3, v3 which would just be v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared, which is just the magnitude of the vector squared. All right, we can reverse the order in which we take the dot product and the result stays the same. So that is the dot product is um, commutes. We can distribute a dot product through a sum. So the dot product of the vector u in the vector v plus w is just the dot product of u and v plus the dot product of u and w. We can distribute a constant through a dot product. We can do c times u first and then take the dot product with v. That dot is really important. Or we can do the vector u and take the dot product of that with c and v, so we can move the c around. And the dot product of the zero vector with any vector v is just going to be the constant zero. Right. Geometrically, there is a relationship between vectors and the dot product. The dot product is related to the angle between vectors in standard position. So the dot product is related to the angle between vectors in standard position. In using the law of cosines, we can show that if we have any um, vectors A and B in standard position, then the angle between them has the property that the cosine of the angle is equal to the dot product of the vectors divided by the magnitude of the product of the vectors. Again, you can prove this using the law of cosines. So if two angles are parallel, what's the angle between them? Well, if two, uh, I'm sorry, if two vectors are parallel, um, the angle between them is either zero or pi. So uh, if the ch -ch -ch parallel theta is equal to zero or theta is equal to pi, and in that case, the cosine of zero would be one, and we would have, that's if they point in the same direction, we would have 
the dot product just equal to the product of the magnitudes. Right? If they're parallel but pointing in opposite direction, the dot product is going to be the opposite of the product of the magnitudes. If vectors are perpendicular, then the angle between them is pi over 2. And if the angle between them is pi over 2, then this quantity must be 0. In other words, the dot product is 0. So when we have two angles that are perpendicular, the dot product will be, them will be, between them will be 0. All right, so we can use this little template to find the angle between any given vectors. So let's suppose we have the vectors that we used previously and found the dot product. Okay. Find the angle between the vectors. We know, let's see, we know the magnitude of V. We can find the magnitude of V. The magnitude of V is the square root of 4 plus 16 plus 1, which is the square root of 21. The magnitude of vector W is going to be the square root of 4 plus 0 plus 121, square root of 125, which we can rewrite as 5 square root of 5, right? We know the dot product, V and W, right? We just did that previously, and I believe we got 7. Negative 4 plus 0 plus 11. So therefore, Therefore, the cosine of the angle between the vectors is 7 over square root of 21 times 5 square root of 5. Remember, this tells me the cosine of the angle between them. I'm just going to rewrite this as 7 over 5 square root of 105, right? So to find the angle between them, we'll use our inverse cosine. The inverse cosine of 7 over 5 square root of 105. Then we'll pull out our calculator, and depending on what mode your calculator is in, so make sure that you're aware, um, you should get about 82.1 degrees, or about equal to, I think I got 1.434 radians. So these angles are, uh, these vectors are almost at a right angle, just short of a right angle. dot product, you can sort of thinking of it as if the extent in which the vectors point in the same direction. If your dot product is positive, the angle between the vectors must be between 0 and pi over 2 because the product of their magnitudes is always positive. So in order for the, if the numerator is positive, the denominator is positive, then the cosine of the angle must be positive and that happens in the first quadrant. So they point, if the angle between them is between 0 and pi over 2, they point generally in the same direction. We're going to have a positive dot product. Right? The smaller their dot product is, the closer it is to 0, the closer they are to being perpendicular. If your dot product is negative, then the cosine of the angle is going to be negative, and the angle must fall between um, pi over 2 and pi, so they point generally in the opposite direction. And if the dot product is 0, then the cosine is zero and the angle between them is perpendicular. All right, that's it. That's your introduction to vectors. I will see you in 12.4.